Hey, hey, my friends. This is Katie back in here for Nehemiah day number four. Just wanted to remind you though, we've still got some tickets left for those friends of yours who need to be at this event. Um, we love seeing the community building in here already. Love that you are enjoying the devotionals. Um, love that you're already sharing about your businesses and your struggles and encouraging one another. And so excited for what God has for us over this next week. By this time next week, we will be sitting um, in session number three on day number one and learning lots and lots of things. But today, we're going to focus in on the next session of Nehemiah, the next part of the story, and what we can learn from him as business owners, as CEOs of the businesses that God has put in our hands to manage and run for his glory. So today, um, we're still in, in Nehemiah chapter two. There's some other things I want to draw our attention to in Nehemiah chapter number two. The fact of the matter is that God gave Nehemiah a passion and he gave him a vision. Now, remember, Nehemiah was the cupbearer. He had spent his whole life in captivity. He had spent pretty much his whole life being, being, um, trained and, and, um, Oh, I can't think of the word in English, but trained trained to be the cupbearer, trained to be the one who was to take the fall for the king, essentially. He was the one who was tasting everything before the king did and uh, willing to give his life for him. And so there was, there was some relationship there, right? And yet he was definitely the subject. He was the one whose life was expendable in this situation. And we're not given any indication that he had any other training outside of tasting food and being there and happy in front of the king. And so um, the fact that God gave him this vision, the fact that God gave him this longing for his homeland and this this burden for his people, I believe God works that way in us too. Sometimes it's the things that we're not qualified for that we have the biggest passion for. Sometimes it's the things that we're not qualified for that he gives us the burden to do. And like Nehemiah, we need to be willing to step into that vision. We heard yesterday, day number three, if you haven't watched that, boldness comes uh, from being on your face before the Lord, right? He spent time crying out to God over this burden and this passion that he had, and then he was ready when the opportunity arose to make a move. And so um, God gave Nehemiah the vision, and when God gives us a vision, we can trust God to make a way for that. Um, what it... Uh, not only did he grant him favor in front of the king, he also provided for him. He, he granted favor. He um, allowed the king to give his permission um, or his blessing rather than his permission. But he also allowed the king to be in a, a place and in a, a, an attitude that was willing to give provision. This royal cupbearer uh, asked the king for letters to provide safe passage for him and for letters to those who kept the, the forest of the king to give him timber, right? To give him what he would need to do the work. And the king granted those requests. But listen to how Nehemiah explains this in Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 8. He says, And because the gracious hand of my God was upon me, the king granted my request. He doesn't say because the king was so gracious. He doesn't say because the king was so awesome. He doesn't say because I asked so eloquently. He doesn't say because I deserved this. He doesn't say because my plans were flawless. He says because the gracious hand of my God was upon me, God did this. And he points it all back to God. And when we recognize that everything we have comes from the good hand of our good God, then all we can do is point back the glory and the favor to him. When we recognize that this business is his business, that these talents are his talents, that this money is his money, that these resources are his resources, that these connections are his connections, that these people we're called to serve are his people, then it has nothing to do with us or any other human that God blesses us. It has to do with God. Because the gracious hand of my God was with me, the king granted my request. And when, the, when you recognize the gracious hand of your God in every circumstance of your life, and you can point that glory back to him, you're going to do great things, whether you're qualified or not, just like Nehemiah did. God delights in you. He delights in the fact that you have these quirky things like the pink flamingo. 
He delights in the fact that you're not like everyone else. He delights in the fact that you are different, that you attract different people, that you have a different way of serving. You know, when, in one of the early days of our ministry here in Campeche, somebody said to us, I know you serve God, you just serve him in a really different way. <laughs> And at first I was offended, but later I realized it was quite a compliment to recognize that God was working in us in his own way. How cool is that? That God delights in you enough that he put this business in your hands, that he put this passion in your heart, that he is giving you what you need to do this for him and for his people. He's, he's got the plan. He knows what the journey is that lies ahead. He's already providing the provision. You're here in this group this week, getting ready for this amazing event next week. He's already providing for you what you need to take your next step. He delights in you and he delights in this gifting that he's given you as a way for you to serve people. Maybe you're not a Bible teacher. That's, that's okay. God needs business owners who do business ethically and righteously to be able to have conversations with people who need to hear about him. Maybe you're in a maybe you're in a bakery, maybe you are a mechanic, maybe you are an artist, maybe you are a teacher. In every situation that God puts us in, he's got a reason and there's people watching. And I've had some clients even this week say, "Nobody's watching, nobody's engaging. Why am I doing this anyway?" And I said, "Yes, they are." This is not for nothing. You keep being faithful with what God has called you to do because there are people watching and you are making an impact in their lives. And this is a long game. This is not an overnight success story. It took us 11 years to be an overnight success story, right? You've got to be in this for the long game, recognizing that your God is an eternal God. Time and years don't matter to him. What matters to him is this vision and this passion that he's giving you for this work that he's placed in your hands. He knit you together. God himself chose every element of your DNA, including what you can do and what you can't do. All of those quirks, all of those special gifts that you have, the way that you think, the way that you communicate, all of that was designed by God on purpose so that you would be prepared to do through him what he's called you to do. He delights in you and we delight in him and in his favor. And recognizing that he is the gracious God who is working in our life and in our business. We're giving him glory. We're recognizing the truth of the fact that I couldn't do any of this without him. I couldn't do any of it without him. He's the one that opens the doors. He's the one that blesses. He's the one that gives the blessing from the king. He's the one that brings the provision and lines it up before I even know I need it. This is his work. And with him, I can walk successful every single day. So like Nehemiah, it's time for us as believers in the marketplace to stand up and be bold about the fact that the gracious hand of our God is upon us. One of my clients has the, um, the habit of saying, I walk in God's favor. I walk in the favor of God. And you, my friend, also walk in the favor of God. The gracious hand of your God is upon you in this business, in your life. And he loves you as much as he could possibly love you right now in this moment, but he wants so much more for you. And that's why you're here, to learn about all the more that he has for you and for your business and the impact that you're going to be able to make for the kingdom because you know how to do business God's way and serve his people through this business. So I hope that that's encouraging to you. I hope that you will take this to heart. If you have time, go back and read through Nehemiah. I saw someone, um, someone mentioned it, that they're reading through it and getting a blessing. Um, I know it will bless your heart because God does that when we read his word. So take some time out this weekend, maybe read through Nehemiah, get some extra encouragement and be thinking about how all of this pertains to you and the business God has called you to build, the people God has called you to serve and to work alongside of in this most amazing work for the Lord. 
excited to get to know you and hear more. Keep engaging, keep keep posting. Um, Myrna is doing a fabulous job posting those posts as we get to know each other here. And we're really excited about the coming days. You'll get some emails um, probably starting on Monday about what's to come. Um, and we're also going to be sending some recipes and some things for those of you that are trying to think ahead and have lunch prepped and things like that so that you can be all in and focused on the event. So watch for those things that are coming down the line. Keep posting pictures of your swag as it arrives. Those Fiesta kits are, are popping up all around the country and we're excited to see you getting those and um, getting the party started. So have a wonderful afternoon. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.